Ed, put this into perspective for us. Offering a $2 billion breakup fee on top of $45 billion bid, is it yeah. a lot or is it underpriced? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a big figure. I think uh, if they paid it, it would be the fourth or fifth uh, largest paid reverse breakup fee for, for, for antitrust, just to be clear. Um, but I think in the context and certainly in terms of what Syngenta have been asking for, it's, it's, it's not a huge amount. Syngenta have asked for more. Syngenta, we believe. Is there a magic number? That, we think they're asking for between 10 and 13 percent of the overall transaction value. Now, whether the transaction gets done at the price that's been offered or whether it's slightly above, it would, uh, it would move the, uh, the break fee slightly. But they want a big, big break fee for, for these reasons. Basically, they are saying that there is huge execution risk on this transaction. There's overlap in what they already do, so that would involve some antitrust risk. There's also some other issues around reputation that they're saying could be a problem. And, you know, any, any deal is going to take a long time to go through. It's a big cross-border deal, potentially mm -hmm. involving an inversion as well. It will take them out of the market for probably minimum nine months a year. And they're saying, you know what, if you want to do that, it's going to cost a lot. You have lot. to pay up for it. Yep. Uh, Alan, when you talk to farmers alike, I mean, these are seed players. These are huge seed players. Do farmers want this kind of deal to go through? You take a look at something, Alex, that would lead to control of 40% of a seed market. And, of course, any farmer is going to be concerned about competition, what does that, that does for pricing. You know, seed prices are triple what they were 20 years ago when you've had the first biotech seeds hit the market. And Monsanto already has a lot of that market. So while you hear Monsanto having assurances, you know, we would be spinning off seed businesses. We would certainly be looking at chemical properties as well. We want to make sure that this is a clean merger. If you're in agriculture, you're looking at this and wondering, how does this benefit us. Now, some of your larger players will talk about economies of scale. It's not that they're unsympathetic to something that increases an efficiency of a company, but you're wary about this just because it sends such a signal that the limited number of players that you already have could become even smaller. And we heard uh, the Senator Durbin, a Democrat from Illinois, kind of weighing in on this. He said today hundreds of millions of dollars that could be invested in infrastructure, education, and research that companies rely on will, in essence, uh, be lost if Monsanto is allowed to go through with this corporate inversion scheme that's obviously part of the deal. Uh, Ed, what is the will of Congress to let something like this even happen? Uh, well, just, let's be clear. We don't, we don't know definitively if it is part of the deal. It's obviously a big option. We think they probably would. The inversion want to invert, part. The inversion part, right. I mean, it would, it would create enormous tax savings for them, like, from day one if they do it. That said, Monsanto, you know, they've looked at this deal in the past when it obviously would have been an inversion. The climate has changed dramatically since then. You know, the government has come out really swinging against companies trying to do this. We haven't seen an inversion for a very long time, certainly not one of size. So I think um, the, the will of the government to let this through would be uh, extremely low. I don't think they would want to see an inversion. I think, you know, as Senator Durbin says, huge tax dollar loss to the U.S. I think Monsanto would be mindful of that. You know, it would be yet another impediment Inverted to them right. getting this done. And, you know, yet another reason Syngenta would say if you want to do it, and especially if you want to invert, execution risk goes up even more. Uh, Alan, you, you mentioned how farmers are really skeptical of having two companies own 40 percent of all se of corn seeds, in essence. What's the power of the farmer lobby to Congress? The farm lobby may not be as strong on this one as you might think, because there is some division there. Some of your larger farm groups, again, are not unsympathetic to the idea of an economy of scale. But Dick Durbin's opposition is really telling. He's originally from East St. Louis, Illinois, i.e., the suburbs of Monsanto's headquarters. Mm. So if you've got somebody who would be in your own backyard who doesn't think this is a good idea, true, Republicans may be more willing to let some of these mergers go through than Democrats, but that is not a good political signal for Monsanto.